Here are 50 tips to instantly make you better at light, including a few at the very end from a professional light player, who's considered one of the best light players in the world. Let's dive into it. If you're using a stun gun, and let's face it, you definitely should, keep in mind that it has a near 100%, if not 100% accuracy when hip firing. So don't waste your time aiming down sights, which slows you down and actually makes hitting your shots harder in the first place. You can throw the red explosive canister and immediately grapple it to go zooming across the map. To pull this off, all you need to do is stick a motion sensor onto the canister, and then you are free to grapple to your heart's content. If you have breach charges in your kit, make sure to always place one or two on top of the cash out when you are holding it, and be ready to activate it the second an enemy starts stealing it. The glitch grenade is a super important, if not a must-have part of your loadout, especially if you're playing ranked, which currently is in a medium and heavy shield-dominated meta, as the glitch grenade will shut off enemy utility, which includes shields, and lets you get some free kills. You can activate the invisibility cloak when reloading, which gives you some space and the ability to reposition to another angle by the time you want to shoot again. If you find yourself missing with the throwing knives, keep in mind that if you're running, sliding, jumping, or just being airborne, there will be random spread which messes with your accuracy. The dagger can one-shot lights and mediums with a secondary fire backstab, but it leaves heavy with a sliver of health left. To kill them just as fast as other belts, hit the melee the second you see the yellow hit markers to animation cancel with a punch. The lights belt has the longest slide out of all of the builds in the game. Make sure that you keep this in mind when you're going for movement techniques or you are chaining slide jumps together. The V9S and XP54 have an incredibly high accuracy when hip firing up to 10 meters away, so there's no reason to aim down sights when you are this close. When you are using the grapple hook, by cancelling the hook at any point after it starts pulling you forward, you will essentially get a forward dash which can be extended by sliding or bunny hopping. These vent holes that you can find on most maps are really only big enough for light and medium build players, making them a great escape route if you ever need to get away from a heavy. While the stun gun is a great tool to give you an edge when you're going for a jewel to open up a fight, you will actually get more value out of it if you don't use it immediately and instead stay a little patient with it. Let's say you get the opening kill on the enemy team. If you still didn't use your stun gun so you have it off cooldown, this means you can easily stun an enemy going for a revive or defibrillator play and then turn them into another kill for your team. It's worth knowing that smokes from smoke grenades not only cut off the line of sight between players, but it also stops them from being able to see the health bars and even outlines of any enemies inside of them. Single fire weapons like the LH1 or the V9S have near zero recoil if you take a tiny moment between every shot. The sword, like most melees, has a pretty forgiving hitbox. This means that if you aim in the general vicinity of your enemy, odds are you're gonna hit them. You can use this to your benefit by making sure to flick or shake your aim when swinging your sword around, which raises the odds of actually hitting the swing. Thanks to that same forgiving hitbox, if you end up missing a lunge on an enemy, don't fret, as you can turn around at any point during the animation and still have the damage connect as long as you're aiming towards them. Make sure to study and learn movement techniques to allow you to move across the map more quickly and efficiently, and make yourself an overall tougher target to hit when you do catch the attention of the enemy team. I'm actually currently working on an extensive movement guide for the finals, so make sure that you have subscribed so you don't miss it. As with both medium and heavy builds, the light user has access to the nuke. Slap your breach charge in a throwable prop, ideally a green barrel for extra gas damage or a red canister for speed, and throw it towards one or many enemies to secure free kills. As with any shotgun, aiming down sides with the SH-1900 won't actually affect your accuracy or your shotgun spread, if anything it'll just make it worse, so stick to hip firing. When using throwing knives, you can hit your secondary fire and immediately enter cloak as it charges up. You will still remain invisible as you're actually throwing the knife. Not many people know this, but your evasive dash can be used in any direction that you are moving, not just forward. All you need to do is hold a movement input in the direction you want to go when you're activating it. Always throw a glitch grenade on top of a cash out before going for a capture to disable any possible mines, or worse, potential C4s or breach charges that are hid around the point. Due to your tiny health pool, you're always going to want to take fights where the enemy isn't looking your way, like if they are focusing on our enemy or you have the better position. Try to have as much cover as possible before engaging the enemy. A good rule of thumb to know that you are in enough cover is when at least two thirds of your screen is behind cover. Always remember that as a light, your strength lies in taking isolated one versus ones, so if you are up against two enemies or full teams that are looking your way, you will rarely, if ever, get out of those alive. Try to reset and play around them. If you're the one on your team carrying the vault, you can slap two breach charges on top of it before picking it up. This lets you use it as an impromptu nuke if an enemy would end up catching you off guard. If you are the last one alive on your team and there isn't enough time left on a cash out for your team to reset, instead of going balls to the walls looking for kills, use your kit to the best of its abilities and just keep trying to deny the cash out with a pick, a quick reset from the fight, with you then coming back to pick whoever's trying to steal it over and over again for as long as possible. Using the underhand throw, that being the secondary fire with the vanishing bomb, will practically guarantee that you will go invisible no matter how you are aiming it. This only doesn't apply if you're standing on top of a ledge where the underhand throw would drop it far below you. If a heavy with an RP 
RPG is looking towards you, get behind cover and switch up your angle or it's gonna hurt. If he can't get out of the way in time, get up as close to the heavy as possible. If he isn't aware of how high the RPG self damage is to the point where he won't shoot at anything that's too close, at the very least the heavy will shoot you with the RPG and kill himself with it too. If you are in a pre-made stack, a great way to deal with a fully encamped or set up team is combining your glitch grenade with your teammates over high damage abilities such as the RPG or even the nuke. Managing your invisibility as a light will always be a bit of an art. Using the visibility will play a loud noise that alerts enemies of your whereabouts, so you only really want to use it as you're crossing the open, where you know that the enemies have a chance of spotting you. Normally I would say you would want to make sure to have at least 75% of your invisibility recharged before you commit to a fight. Thanks to your small stature, the light build will always be the best build to use when you're going for stairwell climbs. In order to pull one of these off, start climbing over the railings around the middle part of the stairs, turn around, start climbing again, and then rinse and repeat until you are at the very top. Dashing into a jump pad, that being a map jump pad or the jump pad placed by a medium player, will make you go so much farther than any other method in the game. Other than the RPG counter that I mentioned earlier, if you are taking a duel with a heavy player and you are forced to commit to the fight, it will be in your best interest to get as close to them as possible while trying to circle around them. As heavies are really tall, comparatively the lights will appear really tiny with a really rough angle, making it very hard for a heavy to track any light who gets too close and personal. Much like in many sword fighting games such as Chivalry or Mordhau, swinging your sword will deal damage along the swing, meaning that since the sword goes from the right to the left, it will start doing damage on your right first and then to the left as the swing travels. With that in mind, you want to turn your view so you're aiming to the left of your target to shave off precious milliseconds and deal damage to them sooner. I really can't recommend the glitch grenade enough. Your biggest priority before entering a fight as a light player is glitching as many enemies as possible. This opens up the battlefield for your teammates, but also for yourself if you want to go for a big play. If you manage to get a big glitch grenade off where you affect two or maybe even three enemies, make sure you communicate this with your team, because this more often than not will be all you need to win a fight. Other than nukes, the breach charge can be used in so many more creative ways. Some of my favorite ones being blowing up holes in the walls or ceilings, which gives you free head glitches and angles to surprise enemies, or blowing up the ceiling when you're a floor under the cash out to steal it or just disorienting your enemies as they fall through the floor and turn into pretty easy kills. An easy way to juke your enemies with the evasive dash is by jumping out a window or off a ledge and then immediately doing a 180 and dashing right back onto the ledge. If you're holding your sword launch animation, you can cancel it by hitting the primary fire button. You can animation cancel the last part of the sword launch by quickly swapping to a gadget and forth after doing damage or reaching where you want to go, either in order to go for another swing or to use other gadgets. The stun gun is a great example of this and in addition to using it for cancelling revives, it's also incredibly handy to deny the enemy team from stealing the cash out. The fastest combo to get a kill on a medium player is by lunging, cancelling by swapping between a gadget and a sword, slicing, and the second you deal damage, you finish them off with a quick melee. Despite their different height, it's worth knowing that all builds can climb equally as high, obviously including light. Due to your tiny health pool, a light will never want to peek the same angle twice. As soon as one or even more enemies get the idea of where you are, make sure to switch up your position and come back from another angle. You can actually reload when using your evasive dash. There's actually a technique that allows light to climb faster than any other build. And this is how you do it. Start a climb, let go of the forward key, hold the sideways input during the end of the climbing animation, jump, and then hold forward. When compared to full speed, it will look like this. And now let's go over some tips from Cersei, a competitive finals player and a light main. But before that, I would just like to thank all of you guys for your support with the subscribing and the likes on the recent videos. It really means the most. But anyways, let's go over the tips from Cersei. Some weapons, especially the ones like the Mac 10 have a really long chamber animation, meaning you'll want to reload at any points before running out of bullets to ensure you don't have to sit through that animation. The taser can be used a lot farther than you really think, especially with the buff. 12 meters is really far. Get comfortable with learning to combine your melees with the rest of your kit. Since your entire playstyle should revolve around bursting someone down with damage, sometimes you need that extra kick from melee to finish them off. A large part of your role as a light other than securing kills is doing recon work. Communicate vital cooldowns to your teammates, the enemy's positions, rotations and setups. Just make sure to communicate as much as possible because information is key. And of course, if you are going to bring down the cash out through the floor, it can be worth it to throw a gas canister into the room ahead of time to deal damage to anyone falling through. And that was it for light. I really hope that this helps and if you have more tips, feel free to drop them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Peace out.